Welcome to this presentation on using open-ended questions during the investigative interview part one. When evaluating an account, such as what happened to a victim, the subject statement as to their activities during the time period in question, what a witness said they saw or heard, the investigator should elicit that information by asking an initial open-ended question early in the interview that invites the subject to, so to speak, tell their story. Here are some examples of the open-ended question. Please tell me everything you know about the fire at your warehouse. Please tell me everything that happened to you after you left work last Friday night. Please tell me everything about the accident that you witnessed. Or please tell me everything you did from noon on Friday until you went to bed. Too often, investigators elicit this type of information by asking very narrow and closed-ended questions that almost force a subject into a lie. For example, in an armed robbery case which occurred at 7.45 p.m., if we were to ask the subject, where were you last Friday at 7.45 in the evening, with such a narrow question, the subject's almost forced to lie, giving us a false statement, a false alibi, which may be difficult to assess in terms of the credibility of such a short statement. There are a number of benefits of asking open-ended questions early in the interview. First of all, the subject is free to include or exclude whatever they want within the statement. So unless we're talking about a fabricated victim's statement, the subject is unlikely to include much false information during their story because the open-ended question doesn't invite fabrication. Information that is volunteered during the response to an open-ended question, for example, the subject's alibi, will probably be truthful at least to some extent. Secondly, the subject response to an initial open-ended question can be evaluated for editing. Where did the subject intentionally exclude specific information that otherwise probably should have been included? And why was it edited out? Finally, responses to open-ended questions generally do not commit the subject, the deceptive subject, to a position of denial, whereas a closed question forces them into that position, oftentimes early in the investigative interview. To illustrate these points, consider the following response to an open-ended question concerning the subject's alibi during the time period in question when a drive-by shooting occurred at about 6.45 p.m. The open-ended question asked of the subject was, please tell me everything you did from noon on Friday until you went to bed that night. Well, around noon, I was shooting buckets with some of my friends, and we decided to go over to McDonald's to get something to eat. Uh, we hung around there for a little while, and then we went over to a friend's house to see who was there. Uh, we were at her home for a while and sat around and talked. Um, after a little bit, we wanted to see a movie. Uh, the movie ended at 7 o'clock. We eventually went over to Paul's house, you know, talked and, you know, hung around. And I walked home from his house about 11. And uh, when I got home, I was on the phone for a little while with my girlfriend. And then I was listening to some music and probably went to bed about 1 o'clock. This alibi does not include any false information, even though the subject was involved in the shooting incident. Notice that he never said they actually went to the movie. He simply said they wanted to see a movie. As will be described shortly, this kind of statement can be analyzed for editing by asking a series of clarifying questions. The investigator may be able to establish that, in fact, the subject did not have an alibi for the time of the crime. On the other hand, if the investigator had elicited the alibi by asking a very specific question, where were you at 645 last Friday night, we're almost forcing the subject to lie and committing themselves to being at the movie uh, when the drive-by shooting occurred, as illustrated by the following dialogue. Where were you at about 6.45 last Friday night? Uh, I was with Paul and Greg. We, we were at a movie. Uh, what movie was that? Uh, hell or High Water? Uh, when did you leave the movie theater? I don't know. I think it ended around 9, maybe 9.15 or so. And, and then what did you do? Uh, well, we were in Paul's car. We drove over to his house for a little while, hung out there for a little bit, and then I left at about 11 o'clock. Eliciting an alibi in this manner actually forced the guilty suspect to fabricate their response to lie to the investigator. It's an obvious principle of interviewing, but one worth stating, it is always more advantageous for us as an investigator 
to have the subject omit part of the truth than to fabricate information through a lie. Developing truthful information that was omitted from a response is much easier than learning the truth from a subject who is committed to a denial and to an out-and-out -out fabrication of his activities during the time period in question. Open-ended questions do not invite the guilty subject to lie. Phrasing the open-ended question. During the interview of a person suspected of involvement in a crime or perhaps fabricating an event, the initial open question should be phrased in the broadest sense possible. For example, tell me everything you did. You do not want to place any parameters within the question that might limit the subject's response. So for example, in a domestic violence case, when we're interviewing the wife, it would be improper to say, why don't you start off by telling me what your husband did to you? The question should be phrased, please tell me everything that happened here this evening. The first question is improper because it assumes that the husband in some way injured the wife and also may limit her response to her husband's physical actions. The second offers no direction at all and allows the wife to report whatever she chooses. Truthful accounts usually start off at some time period prior to the event itself and work their way into the event, into the primary event that occurred. However, before responding to an open-ended question, a deceptive subject may ask, where do you want me to begin? What do you want to know? To which the investigator can simply respond, wherever you want to begin, everything that happened, eliciting a full response. Once a subject starts their response to the original open-ended question, the investigator should allow them to continue without interruption. This is securing what we call the pure version. The, the pure version is their statement without any interruption or direction by us, the investigator. If we do interrupt the subject, it may cause the truthful person to rephrase some of their answers, thinking that they want to give us what we want to know. Also, interruptions that are the result of us asking questions can break the subject's flow of ideas and continuity of response and make it more difficult for us to assess when editing may have occurred. To encourage a full response to the initial open-ended question, the investigator can use a technique called forced silence. As the subject is making their response, if they hesitate, we can make an interjection such as, all right, okay followed by silence, and almost inevitably the subject will continue with their story. When the response is complete, when the subject has finished with their statement, they will usually close it with a remark such as, and that's everything I did. That's everything that happened. So in summary, we ask the open-ended question, not limiting it with any parameters, but tell me everything that happened. Let the subject tell their story uninterrupted, if they pause, just gently nudge them forward, okay, I see, followed by silence, which they'll usually continue with their story at that point, and then listen for the closing remark to that original story. In part two of this program on using open-ended questions, we will discuss how to evaluate the content of response for indications of truthfulness and deception. Thank you very much for taking a few minutes to watch this video presentation.